Okay, so we're gonna go over how to complete the querying part one, and I just rewatched my video from the pre previous one and realized I had already previewed something with the terminal that we're gonna do on the next one, which is okay, it's never too soon to learn the terminal. But before I jump into the assignment, I thought I'd just give you a little overview of what you m may be looking or what you may have not seen uh, in the view from the student perspective because of the way my course is set up. The check marks mean you've completed those items, the uh, red uh, started, yeah, that's what it means, uh, means you've started this item. This one means it's locked and you can't get to it. And then this shows you the items coming up. The thing I wanted to kind of point out was here on grades. When you go into grades, it is really common uh, that you will see comments from me, okay? Um, and because I try to leave comments on every item uh, that you submit. And if you click into here, then you can actually see my comment, okay? And there is a place for you to reply back, right? So if you wanted to reply back, you could also, oh, actually that takes you to the item, but because this is not a full student account, I'm not sure we're seeing all the functionality. But one thing I know this uh, works because students have done this with me a lot, is they may ask me a question. Now, what might they ask me? Well, in this case, if they had done this item ahead of the due date, and they had missed something, you can resubmit that before the due date and fix it. And this is an important thing to understand about my class and the way I've set it up. Is the benefit to working ahead, and I'm probably sure I said this in the overview, is that you can fix things that I find. I do attempt, unless something happens to grade every day. So the benefit of that to you is that if you've missed something, you can fix it. Okay. So I just wanted to give you that feedback before I start into this one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open this item up. And it's going to look pretty sparse, like not a lot here, but I just want to show you. You're watching the video here. And then what I already have up is that is this is my GitHub uh, private course organization. I already have up my uh, code space uh, running. So that's right here, okay? So I just want to show you what I have up and running. So now, the other thing, and this is where, you know, depending on your setup and your workflow, the, the more screen space you could have here, the better. Like you might have a m mobile device that would have this on it, which is the markdown instruction. So this is the instruction that we're going to, I'm going to go through uh, to give you the idea because from the instruction from here on out should follow something like this, okay? So we're doing CS50's querying part one. I've given you a link to the um, video itself. Uh, because of the way Markdown is done, uh, to open this in a new tab, which is what I recommend, I would right click and that's the instruction here open a uh, link in a new tab. That way I have this here. Now this is also something if you want to have it on a separate device. Now this is actually forward from the place we're going to go to, but that's okay. I'm going to come back here, right? So I just want to, I'm going to kind of have you set, uh, think about the setup that you're using, right? So we have over here the assignment that once you're ready, you'll come back and submit. We have the markdown file, which is my instructions for what you need to go through. And then we have the video itself and we have our code space, right? Oh, sorry, let me actually get rid of this one because this is my code space. So this is where I do the work. This is where I watch how to, you know, I follow along. But this is the instruction and this is where I submit. So you can, you know, like for me, I have uh, two screens here. So I could maybe place one of these over into a different screen to follow along there or maybe my code space in a different screen. So I just recommend if possible, you, uh, again, the more screen space, uh, the better this is. Okay, so what you'll do is start uh, in your code space by creating a new file named query. MD. Now this should be uh, nothing new. I'm not going to walk you through it because we've done it before in the other uh, assignment before this. So now you're just figuring out, oh, hey, how do I do that, right? So now in this case, oh, I just see a piece of instruction I forgot was that it needs to go into that week one where you have this set up before. So, you know, by the time you see this, 
I will have already updated the instruction to sh tell you that. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start listening from the very beginning and you'll listen all the way to the end, which will be 2 minutes and 25, okay? But what you'll do along the way is actually the places I tell you, because I'll have you do a commit here, a commit here, a commit here, and a commit here, okay? So in order to get the full points for this, which at the bottom of this you can see how I grade, you'll need to have gone through and done all of these commits and, and you know, provided the content as well. Now I don't specify particular um, particular style in the markdown, but I definitely want to get you used to using like ordered list, unordered list, and headings, right? So one thing I want you to just know is that, remember that when you're working in here, right, you can always preview, right, that to look at how, actually that's not the good example, actually I think it's this one, yeah, this is a better example, right? So over here, you want to look at those notes, right? So, I mean, you can, I'm going to let you do this, these notes in your own because really these ultimately end up being your notes. I just look for them to see how well you cover the content, okay, that I require. Okay, so you commit that, or sorry, you create that uh, query.markdown and now you watch and take notes that will help you better understand the material like questions at you know starting from the beginning to 4 13 and then you stop and answer the questions and then commit right so here's your first commit right so if you were going into here and by the way I guess I will go in and show you this because I think it's a good thing so if you didn't get that file set up I'll show you how to do it now I'll go ahead and set up query dot MD okay and then in here right so I'd come back to the instructions and I'd be like, you know, and I could, you could, now, you don't have to do it this way, just off the top of my head, one thing I could do is I could do uh, first or commit one, right? And then notes, like you could do one, you know, um, answers and questions and your understanding here, blah, blah, blah. Right, so now if we go look at the output, we can kind of see how that does. Again, you don't have to do it that way. I probably should be more precise about this as far as the way the style is, but I kind of want you to uh, play and figure out what works for you. Right, so at, at that four minute, 13, now in this first one, we're not doing a lot of content. You know, we're only going to 12 minutes, so I really want you to actually kind of digest this because this is really good overview content content for you to have, right? So first, right? Uh, and then I say, you know, stop here and answer the question, ask, and then commit, right? Why move? So obviously the content in this case is uh, about, you know, why did we move from spreadsheets? Now this is not my answer, but I just want to show you this first commit and then this should help you do the rest of them, right? So I'm going to come down here, right? I'm going to do my get status. Good, I have a new file, so I do git add star. So now I've committed, I've, I've, now I'm tracking that file, and I do git commit dash m, right? Now I'd be like, oh yeah, what was that commit Rio wanted? You could actually just, if you happen to remember it, or you happen to have this on a different screen, that's really helpful. Oh yeah, so keyboard bindings want to make sure. Oh yeah, so there's actually, this is good. Let's see if it lets me do it this way. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, so I would say uh, what what this is is there's a, I I actually have a new setup today. Oh, maybe it's gonna allow it here. Oh, good, it did. <laughs> so that actually there wasn't something I had to go in. Oh, now this is important. See what I'm trying to do here is I was trying to actually put my mouse there. It wasn't letting me. And I don't know if you saw what happened there. Is I got a message up in my uh, address bar for allowing that so it wasn't something I had to go in and do the settings for. Oh, I actually got it twice so what I could do is just get rid of this. Okay, so there's my first commit message. Again, you could write it. Okay, so now I've committed that 
And if you remember back to learning about the Git workflow, you might think, and it wouldn't be an issue if you did, you could do Git push right now. But you actually don't have to do that until you have all the commits done. Now, is it a good idea if you were working on a longer assignment and you wanted to go away and maybe stop your uh, code space? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. But in general, with something like this, now you can move on, right? Now continue from that place and then take notes uh, on what a database is and the role of a DBMS uh, that, that it plays and then answer the question at 649 of what other DBSs you may have heard of and then commit right so if you haven't heard of any or if you have right then answer that but then give the answer that they gave as far as the other ones and this one would be terms and other okay and then continue watching at that point right take notes to help you better understand right and then continue watching and this is where it's just having you take notes we're not doing a commit and then at 844 and this would be like maybe a new subheading you could do you know Give what you think the answer to what is SQL. And don't Google it. That's actually not the point. It's just kind of see where you're, you know, what kind, this is where I read this to see kind of what, uh, if you've had some past experience or, you know, it just gives me a gauge of this. So, right. And then give some uh, type of styling here. This is what I was talking about before. Okay. And then commit with what is SQL. And then pick it up at 844. Do another one. And this one would be query and be like SQL like, because that's what we'll talk about in the next one. So then once you finish that last commit, having answered and done all the content, then you're ready to uh, actually over here do your Git push. Okay, so this pushes your code over to GitHub, right? So uh, if I come back to here, now this is, I'm on the public, I would go into my private, right? my private repo here I would come into my week one now this I could make it a little bigger right and then I could go into history now in this case um, I'm actually make sure and this is good like you can see on the URL it actually shows me commit and then main is the branch and w1 is the week so if I copy that and I come over here then I start the assignment that is what I will do to submit that assignment okay I hope this helps you out so from here on out I'll assume you have some of that you know um, that instruction we've already gone over if you need to go back and look at it go do that and check it out hope this helps